Now, the devolution of further powers to Holyrood will take another step forward later today when MPs from all sides get the chance to debate the second reading of the Scotland Bill, introduced by the UK government off the back of the Smith Commission recommendations. Before that debate, the Scottish Finance Secretary, John Swinney, will have a separate meeting with his Westminster counterpart, George Osborne, and the Scottish Secretary, David Mundell. Well, Mr Mundell joins us now from Dover House. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, on on the agenda today, before we get to the Scotland Bill, Mr Swinney will be telling you and Mr Osborne that you could ease the scale and speed of the cuts, invest in public services and still meet your debt and borrowing targets. Will you be listening to his advice? Well, what we'll be saying to him is that by taking forward the Scotland Bill provisions, he'll be able to make decisions about spending in Scotland. If he thinks that uh, more money is required to be spent in Scotland, he will be able to make those decisions within the Scottish Parliament. He'll have to justify it to taxpayers uh, in Scotland in, in order to raise that money. But the Scotland Bill really overlaps into those uh, discussions because what it's about is about giving the Scottish Parliament much more ability to raise the money that it spends and for it to be making these decisions in relation to what it thinks the level of spending in Scotland should be. We'll get on to more of that in just a moment, but uh, perhaps the, the, the Conservatives were acting quite tough before the election on cuts, but uh, now we're hearing reports that uh, ministers are hoping economic growth will lessen the need for, for cuts. and and you'd expect been expecting to water down such as 12 billion cuts and um, hoping that there might be a Lib Dem coalition but obviously that didn't happen what we are about is is, is economic growth is about stabilising uh, the nation's finances. Unless we get the finances right, we're not going to have economic growth. We've been quite clear, we're not out of the woods yet. We've got to have uh, prudent financial decision uh, making. If there are savings that can be made and the savings are relatively modest, then they should be made. The savings proposed in Scotland are less than half of the underspend uh, that the Scottish Government had uh, last year. These aren't significant savings, but they're important in terms of ensuring that we have financial stability so that we can have the economic growth and the prosperity that we all want. Now, of course, you're saying the Scotland Bill will, of course, help Scotland have that economic growth, but Mr Swinney will be telling you and Mr Osborne that it doesn't go far enough, it doesn't go enough to fulfil the vow or actually the recommendations of the Smith Commission. I'm absolutely clear that the Scotland Bill does fulfil uh, in full the recommendations of the Smith Commission and I'm very happy to have, as it's been described, my feet held to the fire in that regard. We're going to have four full days of line-by-line -line, uh, debate of this bill after today's general uh, debate. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for all our MPs from Scotland and indeed elsewhere to discuss it in detail. I think it will stand up to that scrutiny in terms of delivering the Smith Commission. Of course the SNP want to go further, that they want Scotland to be independent. That's their... Uh, that's their, their position. Uh, I don't expect anything else. What we are looking to do is to deliver this historic agreement, which the SNP and the four other parties in the Scottish Parliament signed up to, right. to deliver this but package of powers to make the Scottish Parliament a powerhouse parliament. In terms of standing up to scrutiny, the SNP still believe that um, it gives the Scotland Bill gives Westminster a veto over the new universal credit, that you're, you're still retaining these controls. There are no vetoes in this bill, what there are are mechanisms for two governments to work together using shared systems. There isn't any veto where the UK government can say we don't like what you're doing and we're not letting you do it. There are mechanisms whereby shared systems and are being used. But in fact, the Scottish government will be able to determine what they want to do in relation to the £2.5 billion of welfare powers they'll have, the £11 billion of income tax. Most of these really big issues are actually not in contention. I would say that we're in agreement in, uh, by, in about over 90% of this uh, bill. There are some uh, what I would call process issues uh, which are you know, still under discussion. Right. And we're in daily discussion with the Scottish Government on how to take this forward. I want a bill that everybody can stand up at the end of the process and say this meets the Smith Commission recommendations. Now, in terms of taking it forward, uh, some other people were saying, well, this is all a bit rushed, isn't it? I know you're wanting to adhere
adhere to a, a strict timetable. But when you're perhaps rushing this through Parliament, when you could have a hodgepodge of new legislation, quite complicated, different financial instruments, people, including Sir Markham Rifkind, has been saying this is all a bit rushed. I'm proud of the fact that this is the first bill being brought forward onto the floor of the House of Commons after the general election. That meets our commitment to deliver on the Smith Commission recommendations. I had people emailing me on the 19th of September last year about getting on with delivering these additional powers. That's what we're doing. We all know this debate has been long had in Scotland. We've had the Smith Commission. We've had a detailed uh, civic consultation on the proposals. We're ready to go. We're up for line-by-line -line scrutiny. I want, as I say, my feet to be held to the fire. I want to be able to but say this not at have the been end of the process with... that, that we have delivered the Smith Commission recommendations in full. But should we perhaps not have considered the rest of the UK when it comes to devolving more, more powers, consider this as a whole? There's a very significant package of proposals that this government taking forward which impact on the rest of the UK, new devolution for Wales, uh, a powerhouse uh, arrangement for the uh, northwest of England, changing the, the equilibrium in the House of Commons to allow English members to determine what happens uh, on devolved equivalent of devolved matters in England. So there is a whole raft of measures which will impact on the rest of the UK in a positive way. But this was a commitment to Scotland made by this government and we're delivering it. Now, uh, you mentioned this at the beginning of the interview. Could this perhaps be a, a Tory trap, as some people are calling it, to get this legislation passed before the 2016 Holyrood election? Your unpaid advisor, Professor Adam Tompkins, has been writing in the record today saying Mr Swinney can bring a budget of his own to Holyrood, put up taxes for Scottish taxpayers and spend as lavishly as, as he wants. Is this a, a loss of political posturing ahead of the Holyrood election? It's very important we deliver the bill ahead of the Holyrood election so that people voting in that election know the powers of the politicians they elect. But in the 2016 election, we need in Scotland a debate about tax and spend. We need to debate how much money we want to spend, what we want to spend on it, spend it on, and where it's going to come from. And I think that will bring the maturity to the debate in Scotland that we desperately need. Uh, and I think that's something to be welcomed. David Mundell, the Secretary of State for Scotland, will be meeting John Swinney and uh, George Osborne for talks today. Thank you very much for joining us. Just coming up to eight o'clock. As we've been hearing this morning, the process of transferring further powers to Holyrood takes another step forward later when the Scotland Bill gets its second reading in the House of Commons. The Scottish Secretary, David Mundell, told us a few minutes ago that it shows the UK government delivering its promises to Scotland. I'm absolutely clear that the Scotland Bill does fulfil uh, in full the recommendations of the Smith Commission and I'm very happy to have, as it's been described, my feet held to the fire in that regard. We're going to have four full days of line-by-line -line, uh, debate of this bill after today's general uh, debate. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for all our MPs from Scotland and indeed elsewhere to discuss it in detail. I think it will stand up to that scrutiny in terms of delivering the Smith Commission. Well, listening to that in our Westminster studio is the SNP's Chief Whip and Deputy Leader, Stuart Hosey. Good morning to you. Good morning. Do you agree with David Mundell there saying that this does fulfil in full the Smith Commission recommendations? Uh, sadly, uh, David's wrong. Uh, there's continuing vetoes over things like universal credit. There's continuing restrictions on who the Scottish Government could pay carers' benefits to. There's a failure to devolve fully employment support services. No, sadly, this doesn't even go as far as the Smith Commission, uh, let alone delivering the powers the Scottish people voted for so at the election. And he says you're going to have plenty of opportunity to, to hold his feet to the fire to discuss um, this, these different recommendations. What will you want to put forward? What particular amendments? Oh, there'll be a whole series of amendments in the committee days. Uh, they're the following subsequent Mondays. Obviously, today we've got the second reading debate. We've got a reasoned amendment uh, where we explain that the bill uh, simply doesn't go far enough uh, either to meet the Smith Commission recommendations themselves, uh, let alone the additional powers the Scottish people voted for at the election. So there'll be a whole series of amendments to bring it up to where it should be as a bare minimum and then to push forward uh, to try and gain more powers for, uh, for the Scottish Parliament. Yeah, but what specific areas, though, Stuart Hosey? We've got Labour suggesting six specific areas where they will table amendments. What will you do? 
Oh, the, sorry, apologies. In terms of the specific areas, we need to uh, improve uh, the way in which we're able to uh, uh, introduce new benefits. Uh, we must introduce amendments uh, to stop uh, vetoes over uh, various bits of the legislation. So there'll be a whole series of amendments depending on the theme today as we're discussing over the next month. And so you will be bring through specific, or bring forward oh, absolutely, rather, yes, specific, yes, because yes, it does yes. sound, doesn't it, a bit like a wish, a wish list at the moment rather than specifics here to, to amend well, remember, the law? Well, remember, the second reading, we can only put forward a reasoned amendment uh, which explains why the legislation doesn't go far enough. Once we get into the committee stages of this legislation, then we'll bring forward the absolute specific amendments to improve it in all areas that the Scottish Parliament uh, Devolution Committee identified weaknesses, and we've identified weaknesses as well. And you've been challenged at that point to put forward an amendment on full fiscal autonomy. Will you do that? Well, of course, we want uh, full fiscal responsibility. Even our, even our amendment today suggests that the Scottish Parliament should be responsible uh, for maximum revenue raising. So we're not running away from this. So we'll uh, hear it so in the committee stage then, will we, Stuart Hosey? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the key thing here we've got to remember is we will try to get as much power as we possibly can for Scotland, maximum responsibility. But remember, the UK government and our friends and other parties are opposing this at the moment. So we need to see exactly where the lie of the land is. But we'll most certainly be uh, making all of the demands we possibly can uh, for maximum responsibility for Scotland. Yes. And that will be in the, the committee stage of this bill then? Because people well, do, as you said, I mean, you, you brought it forward that people think that you're running scared from f full fiscal autonomy because the, the eco economic conditions are, are not right at this moment to support it. <laughs> Well, that's certainly an argument our political opponents have said, but uh, you know they can't have it both ways. They uh, can't ma make the claim that somehow Scotland would be poor, uh, which of course is daft, and then make the same claim that we're running scared. The truth is that we need maximum powers in Scotland in order to grow the economy. It's really a very weak argument to say the economy hasn't performed very well over the last couple of years, and therefore we should leave all the control of all the levers of power in the hands of the people who've made those mistakes. That's just not a very credible argument from our opponents. And ultimately, as David Mundell says, anything that you bring forward, you're going to have to justify those decisions to taxpayers. Do you think you have a strong argument if you have to raise taxes to pay for some of the welfare changes that you want to bring in? Well, what we're trying to do is get the powers for the Scottish Government in order to grow the economy properly. But uh, David's right in one regard. It's not simply good enough to win a vote. Of course you have to win an argument. But we're not seeking powers in order to put up taxes to do X, Y or Z. We're seeking control over all of the levers of the economy and welfare spending so that we can grow the economy, create more jobs and deliver a fairer society. And I think it's the fairer society bit that uh, people like David and the Conservative Party uh, rarely understand. You're uh, looking obviously for some extra powers which, and you seem to be in agreement with Labour over that. Have you spoken to them at all? You have common ground there it would seem. Would you join forces with them? Well, you saw our response to Labour's amendments on the Queen's speech last week. Uh, we voted with Labour uh, against the provisions uh, that the, uh, the Tory government were bringing forward. Unfortunately, they abstained and couldn't support us. Now, I understand Ian Murray said earlier today that uh, he would work with us uh, to try and strengthen this bill. Well, the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, and the first opportunity Labour have will be to back the SNP in our reasoned amendment tonight. Stuart Hosey, thank you very much indeed for joining us, the SNP's Chief Whip and Deputy Leader.